Hey everybody over there at Furycraft. Hope all of you guys are doing okay on your side of the internet. As always, I'm Jack. Boris this time it has not been on a night out, so he's been a good boy. He's doing fine, so he might be a bit more uh, coherent this time. Ben's just over there on the other side of me, which, well, over there to my, well, my right, but technically the left, but whatever. But anyway, going to be on to this live stream on something which is very near and dear to me. If you guys have ever heard of Jerry Anderson, then you will likely know of Thunderbirds. If you know of Thunderbirds, but you don't know about Jerry Anderson, what are you doing with your life? Do your research. But you may have heard of another series called Stingray and Captain Scarlet, which Captain Scarlet is going to be the main one that we're focusing on today. So the old puppet show from 1968. Not that kind of puppet show, but puppets. And it's kind of an extension of the different universe, which you have Thunderbirds, Stingray, and Captain Scarlet, one of my favorite ones. I had the joy to meet Jerry Anderson a good few times when he was when I was a kid, as he lived in the same village as my dad. So I got to meet him a good few times, which was a great life experience. But for this one, I've been re-watching Captain Scarlet a lot recently, and if you've never seen it, and just because you young pups probably never would have heard of it, but... If you're not into kind of old 60s kind of style things such as um, Thunderbirds, which you might have seen a few times on ITV, uh, which sometimes pops up on there or on YouTube, Captain Scarlet is a main series about one person who basically was taken over by the Mistrons, which is an alien race who can recreate things such as objects, people, and control and basically control for in some cases and take on the appearance of anybody they choose for their own dastardly evil meat. So Captain Scarlet, onto this one. No! <laughs> okay. So, so Captain Scarlet, this one. Have you seen very much of it since I sent you the links for the playlist? See, I remember watching it growing up as a kid anyway, because my dad was a big fan of it when he was a kid, so it was just staple family viewing for me and my sister growing up. It was an interesting series nonetheless. Like, it was the late 60s. It was essentially very space-driven because that was what was the theme at the decade was everyone into the space race. The Mr. Ons... There wasn't much to him other than just this weird double circle villain that would just yeah, float like, across yeah. like <laughs> spectacles. And then you have a very deep, ominous voice going, we are the we Mr. Are the Mr. Ons. Ons. <laughs> and it was, it was a very ambiguous villain, to say the least, because like you say, they could take on any form, but they never really fully ve revealed as to why. Like, at the end of the day, they were just... An alien that came from Mars that wanted to invade Earth just because. Exactly. Then, like, yeah. Then in the 2007 series, they tried to sort of explore a little bit more out of it by saying that because man had landed on the Mars mission, it disrupted something on the Mr. On plane of Mars, which yeah. basically peeved them off. And that's why they attacked, which is a bit more of a reasonable logic to it than just going, we are aliens, we do not like you humans, we shall invade. And that was it. Like It didn't last very long. It was quite a few episodes, but it only lasted for one series in the original series. Yeah, back in the 60s, because you had um, the space expedition to Mars, which, again, that wasn't stated why. But if I could just go and take a minute just to explain to you guys what Spectrum is. So you have Spectrum, which is a group of... Um, Basically, you have different captains. So you've got Captain Blue, Captain Scarlet, Captain Yellow, Green, basically every kind of colour you can imagine. And they're all part of an organisation called Spectrum, which, if I remember this correctly, is sort of in part like to a protection for a worldwide government, because in this world, there is only... Um, you don't have prime ministers, you don't have presidents, you don't have kings, you don't have queens. 
be an Arab queens. It's a one world. You only have a one world presidency and yes. one leader for the entire world. Which not going to go into the politic inside because that will take a video in itself on that one. But yeah, what? So a one world government. So it's basically a one world government, and they're kind of the protectors that go worldwide for various missions. So at the start of the very first episode in the puppet series in the sixties, you had Captain Black and two others whose names are never stated go to Mars for whatever reason. And they end up finding a Martian sort of... It's like a Martian village, almost. It was very... You could tell it's from the 60s, like mm -hmm. how shiny, how, like, plasticky glass and all this. Yes. And it had, like, lava lamps, all this kind of stuff, like proper 60s. It was kind of cool for what it was. but mm -hmm. And there was a gun turret which was turning, like, from the alien village. And Captain Black, who's the main character for this one, who said... Oh, they said... All right, Lieutenant, let him have it, and then shot to and then shot to bits this alien village. But the Mysterons is when you first see they're able to basically replicate themselves as if something never happened, so they're able to regenerate. And mm -hmm. regeneration factor is going to play a key part as we go along in this video. And then Captain Black ends up getting somewhat possessed by the Mysterons by this alien race to do their bidding and becomes a Mysteron agent after that. Correct. The thing is, well, it's like obviously Captain Scarlet. He he actually dies, but is brought back as a Mister On. But by some whatever weird reason, he's able to regain his control, which again is a big plot point that they never fully cover. Even in the newer series, he just literally magically regains his consciousness, but he so, has the same abilities as the Mister Ons. So, like, do you want to explain what happened, or do you want me to explain it? You can go into it, because it'd be better coming from you, I think. And then we'll kind of go into the, lo lo the logistics of it afterwards. But, so, yeah, yeah, Captain Black... No, sorry, Captain Scarlet, Captain Brown, that were on their way to um, to see the worldwide president, I believe, in the first ever episode. So they're, drive so they're driving um, up to there. So Captain Scarlet ends up losing control of the car. One of the tires bursts, they fall off a cliff, it explodes, and they die. So both of them end up getting replicated by the Mistrons. So, so the Mistrons end up recreating another version of Captain Scarlet, which obviously means it's not the original Captain Scarlet. It's basically a Mistron puppet. And this Captain Scarlet, the original, is now dead, and they've made a new Captain Scarlet, which is basically a henchman for the Mysterons for this alien race. And so later on in the episode, that Captain Scarlet dies by falling off a sky park, which is basically a skyscraper car park, falls off the falls off the sky park, ends up coming to, and yet for some reason, for whatever reason, survives falling off that manages to have some kind of weird healing factor and somehow has got the original personality and such of Captain Scarlet, which makes no sense. Yes, but then, unless I'm remembering wrong, didn't he also have this weird sixth sense that he could tell where the Mr. On agent Captain Black was in certain episodes, or he could tell who was a Mr. On to some degree? Like he uh, had a weird... Vaguely, yeah. Yeah. Which again in itself was just so bizarre because that would logically be that the Mysterons were a hive mind, which would explain how they're able to all construct things back together again. But then how does that make it so he's able to be himself when he's not technically himself, he's a Mysteron? Because he's not a Mysteron agent like Captain Black. He no. is literally a Mysteron with the body outer shell of Captain Scarlet. So how the fudge is he supposed to be Captain Scarlet fully when he's not? Yeah, because it's yeah, it's technically the Captain Scarlet which we see technically isn't Captain Scarlet. It's a it's a Mister Ron. Technically, yes. Yeah. For some reason, has lost his Mister Ronnie ness, but has still got like the powers. Can survive pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. And this whole series is based on Captain Scarlet being indestructible because reasons. But yes. it's it's never elaborated on it's never explained and i'm just like how does this work but this is it i mean <laughs> it was a fascinating series to itself yeah. because it also had i never understood the logic behind the angels team as well it was like it was all just basically female pilots who would intervene at random moments because plot that was literally it like 
they had no other function other than being that it was just diversity for women, that it was a team of women, because they were just called the Angels because they were, well, they flew in the sky and they were women. That's slightly yeah. angelic. But other than that, like, that in itself made no sense because I think Harmony, I think, was one of them. The blonde one was meant to be engaged to Captain Black before he no. died. Oh, no, no, the blonde, she was engaged to Captain Blue. I thought it was Captain Black for some no, reason. No, I'm pretty sure it's Captain Blue. But again, it was just like such an obscure thing to add uh, into it. De Destiny Angel was her name. Yeah. There we go. But it was like they didn't have much of a function to them because they would just fly the planes. They would make a big explosion, but always end up missing the target, if I remember correctly. And then it'd be Captain Scarlet saving the day regardless, because, of course, the series all is all about him, not the angels. Yeah, but then the, doesn't it kind of mitigate the point of having Spectrum, like this agency of all the different captains and lieutenants? I... But then you also, in itself, the guy that ran the whole thing was Colonel White, which, uh, yes. <laughs> which in itself is... I don't know, to me... The puppet looks like a version of Colonel Sanders without the goatee. <laughs> it it does. I'm sorry, but it's an older white gentleman that has a very chiseled jawline, but has no <laughs> mustache or beard. Or I mean, if of, I or, or sort of like an older Action Man before Action Man was a thing. Well, well, the thing is, Action Man wasn't far off then. I think it was the early '60s, late '50s that Action Man came in. Are you sure it's that old? Yeah, because I remember James May doing a TV series all about toys, and Action Man was one of them. And I'm pretty sure Action Man was in the very early part of the 60s, give or take. Because Action Man originally was like nothing near what we have in for now. No. If anything, I swear they got inspiration from the Captain Scarlet puppet to make it into Action Man today. Because the look of Captain Scarlet and Action Man are so similar now compared to what they were originally. Yeah. But the series itself was just bizarre. Like like we say, we had no idea what the plot of itself was other than... There we wasn't got these... really a plot. <laughs> it was just puppets with laser beams, explosions and glowing green circles. <laughs> yeah, in case any of you lot are confused about the glowing green circles... The Mistrons, you never actually see the Mistrons. You only ever see them as, like Ben said, these two like white circle light thingies, which that's all you see. That's it. I mean, at the end <laughs> of the day... Which obviously are meant to represent eyes. And like at the beginning of every single intro for Captain Scarlet, you obviously hear, this is the voice of the Mistrons. And then they say like a load of dribble about what mission they have yes. and all that. <laughs> But there we go. That's a rough idea as to what we mean by the Mysterons, okay? Yeah, so yeah, we got yeah. the puppet there. I don't know which angel that one was because you had Harmony, I... you had Destiny, and you had one other one, which I could never remember. Uh, I don't remember. But those green circles, folks, is literally what the Mysterons was re represented by. That was literally what you got. Yeah, and yet they were so ominous and so scary and mysterious. We are the Mysterons. Okay, <laughs> like that was it. Like even with the modern day version, that was all you got. Like, you didn't ever see what they were supposed to be. No, you never actually see them in alien form. No, unless that is their alien form, which in itself is a bit well. And then pathetic. you have. And when you, like, Captain Scarlet, and mostly Captain Blue, because they were kind of like partners and like friends, and they had missions out in space and such. And obviously, it was mostly based around space, because like you said, like, the space race between, like, the USA and the so and Soviet Russia was going on. You had movies like the Space Odyssey 2001. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars wasn't even a thing yet. No. Nope. Um, although you did have Star Trek at the time, I think. I think Star, Star Trek. Trek I think Star Trek was the late part of the sixties, perhaps early seventies. Yeah, but it was very. It was a very space-driven decade. Yes, time. definitely. 
I think mostly down to the fact that because obviously the first ever space launch was 1964. Um, or all the, uh, do you mean the first manned? Yes. Um, I know it was actually a lot earlier than that, which I think it might. Don't quote me on it. It might have been late forties or early fifties, where I think you had Sputnik, which was the first um, satellite which was launched, and then I think you had the Dog, which was launched into space. Yeah, cat. I might be wrong. And no, it's Dog. Then eventually, Definitely had, Dog. Then eventually, you had a monkey that was sent up into space, and then, uh, and then and then a natural monkey. Because pretty much all, that's all we are. But um, yeah, sort of getting a bit off topic. But with that, you have a lot of expeditions to space. And you have one particular episode, which I think... If you try and find Captain Scarlet episodes on YouTube, they're in an album. But except half of them are blocked. Because um, I think YouTube has this kind of restriction depending on the country, I mm. think. Have you ever seen those weird blocks? Yeah, I think it's down to either... It's- VPN blocking, or it could be just down to copyright strikes because it's YouTube. Like that's what YouTube likes to do that the most. Oh, it just reminds me of that Leon Lush song they did. <laughs> they claim this, they claim that, because they don't give a single, and I'm not going to sing the rest of the song because of copyright. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. If you've ever heard that song, it's called the copyright abuse song because they claim this and they claim that. But um, yeah, with the one particular episode, which I think was maybe in the twenties, I think episode twenty-ish. But yeah, Captain Blue, Captain Scar, that went to space with uh, Lieutenant Green, mm-hmm. and it's just you go inside their alien base, and oh my goodness, it's like a hippie. It's like a hippie's dream. Like if like imagine if a hippie designed NASA. This is what this thing looked like. It was amazing. Like lava lamps, lava lamps, all sorts. It was fantastic. It, like, I well, mind you, I the just... six, the sixties space narrative was all new to us at the time, though. Very true. I mean, try to see if we can find anything that will reference to what you're on about. But uh, no, if I can't just, see. To... If you just type in Captain Scarlet Mars base, it should come up. But. um it's like they um, had a lot of various different things, like with, um, especially with like the cult, with like color coding, if I can go into color coding with their costumes and everything. They all wore certain uh, jackets, boots, and had even had weapons which matched whatever color they were. I don't think the color actually dictated how high up they were as a rank. They were all just kind of the same uh, caliber, just with different colors. Yes, pretty much. I mean, they all had the same sort of vest design and the hat. I never really understood the point of the hats. I mean, it was quite cool that they had a built-in intercom that literally flicked down, which was quite... The fact that it was puppets as well, because the size of the puppets were like the size of action figures, which is about, well, about a foot at the most, give or take. Well, they were were probably about as tall as Boris or a bit shorter, actually. Give or take. But the fact that you'd have to... The size of those intercom pieces would have been tiny, if you think about it. Oh, And the fact that... I'm wondering how they would have done it. Like, would it be on a piece of fishing wire and they'd have to film it in reverse so they'd have to, like, flick it up so then when they put it back down... This is what I love about classic TV is that these are the days where CGI had never existed. They had to make do with what they could actually make. And like, because they were puppets, like close up shots, they actually had to film a person's actual hands to do yes. stuff like doing a zip and stuff like that, because obviously yes. a puppet couldn't do that sort of no. stuff. No. But then it's also watching the way that the puppets walk. It was quite funny because obviously they couldn't walk as actual people. So it always no. looked like. It's kind of like when you're trying to help yeah. someone that's drunk, but you're drunk at the same time, sort of walking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like where you like you just about got your own balance, but you're trying to help their balance at the same time. And it's like doo, 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 doo. it was always hilarious because like the puppets had no facial expression either. They were always just no. like that, and like the no, way their lips but... move was always like that. Was always like, kind of like this. It always looked yeah. like they were really <laughs> cold. Like they were just like. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> But but the thing as well is, like, I suppose because they didn't have enough budget, they couldn't have, like, multiple heads. So they always looked like they had the resting bitch face on them, especially the female ones. Like, 
at least with the male characters, they looked serious. They looked very like I'm in charge. I'm supposed to be serious. But with the female puppets, it always looked like I'm really miffed off with you, but I don't know why. Oh, I don't know. But with um, like with Captain Sky, there was something which um, it was a question I wanted to like wait till I um till we did this and I wanted to delve into. But with obviously in this universe, there is a one there is a one world government. So the whole mm-hmm. world is just one is just one government, which I assume is going to be one currency all around the world. Which I'm pretty sure that may be the Illuminati's plan. Which, yeah, I'm I'm convinced it's pretty much shadow government. I think it's inevitable, but not going to go into that. But uh, that's a different video entirely, which will take about a few days. But um, with a one world government, and with um, obviously you've got Spectrum with all the different captains and so on. But the thing which mystifies me is that I don't think we ever actually. Oh no, there is such a thing as police in this universe, and mm. like sort of emergency services like fire brigades, paramedics, all that kind of stuff. But then it makes me think, is Spectrum, like with all the captains, maybe like a, I don't know, like a one world army of sorts? I don't know. I mean, because the majority of the tech, it's not aimed in the idea of like fighting. It's more as an exploration type thing, if you think about it. Yeah. I mean, Captain Scarlet's car had a few, like, missiles and stuff, but then the bigger, bulkier stuff was more, like, tank-based in terms of, like, exploration stuff. Yeah. So I think it was more in terms of, like, sort of search and rescue type thing than it was protect yeah. and serve. Yeah. Because you have, like, stuff with, like, the Thunderbird series and Stingray, where they had more diversity in terms of their vehicles and what they were capable of. But with Spectrum, it was, you have the Sky Base, which I swear is where Marvel got their inspiration for the Helicarrier. It, it, yeah, it does look quite similar. <laughs> but other than the Angel's individual jets, I can't think of much in the way of their own individual vehicles that had fighting capabilities yeah and it's just i think if you wanted to make spectrum a bit more of like a um i thought you'd be it'd be smart to make them a bit more of like a i don't know like a secret like tactical kind of team i suppose just because well mind you like if they were ever out in the crowd trying to be like trying to spy on people they couldn't look any more obvious with like no they stick out like a sore thumb yeah bright pink bright yellow, bright blue, like, vest. You, you cannot miss them. Even their cars are the same colour. Yes. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to get on. There's these vehicles which they have, which the only way I can describe them are kind of like Hummers slash tanks on roids. And these things, for whatever damn reason, you can only drive while facing backwards and driving by monitor. Yeah, I could never get my head around How that. How does that work? <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't. I could never get my head around that because then the other issue as well is like all you, because the one thing the Mysterons were capable of was disrupting electronics. If I remember rightly, they were very good at interfering with TV signals and other things like that. So all the Mysterons would have to do is like give them a false feed from the camera on their visor, like when they move, and then they could easily like veer off the road and kill them, and then make them into Mysterons themselves and take over Spectrum, and then it'd be over with. Yeah, because you had, like, Captain Black, which is a recurring character through, like, all of this. But even though it was such a long time, I cannot remember what happens to Captain Black. I don't know if they maybe intended to carry on the series and then couldn't, and then everything was left on a cliffhanger, or if it actually ended in something. I cannot remember, but the, the really cool thing about Spectrum and with all the weapons and vehicles which Spectrum has for all the different captains is and anywhere they go around the world in like every on every single continent in every single city town whatever there is certain people that are tasked to hold vehicles and to hold weapons yes. and stuff like that which i find really quite cool is that i've, ne- I've not seen that since to be honest no really. but then that in itself i always wondered well what was the point of that because if they're meant to be like a secret spy organization because the whole point of their sky base was so they weren't being able to be seen or be found or something along those lines uh, roughly yeah so then how big of an organization was it 
to then recruit random people across the globe, not just like in England, but across the globe, to hold on to these ginormous vehicles just willingly and then be able to hide it from the general public so easily. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And like even with um with really cool things like little tidbits like the Mr. Ons could do in one episode, which is one of my favorite ones, they managed to yeah, the Mistrons managed to take control over a massive, like, this wasn't a jumbo jet. This thing, you know, like, on a jumbo jet or, like, another big uh, aircraft carrier usually has, like, maybe two floors, uh, two floors. But this one had, like, about six. This thing, I don't know how the heck it got off the ground, but it basically the Mistrons caused this, this massive uh, aircraft to crash and managed to create a whole different aircraft in the sky. I managed to replicate things like uh, radio communications to make them think it's the people that are uh, that actually piloting the plane. There's no limit to what the Mistrons can do, which actually I felt like it could have had more. More, I always feel like it could have been more, especially if they ever wanted to do like a reboot or do like a... I think you have to do it kind of as a series. I don't think you can do it as a film, but you have to explain what these Mistrons actually are apart from yeah. aliens that have a spooky voice and two eyes well this is it i mean that was the the one thing that i think as a whole this series was lacking even when they rebooted the new one they didn't really delve into it much because there was nothing into it to delve to i mean if if, for instance, we were to do a live action version of this, I can guarantee at some point ITV would probably look into it like the next 10 years or so because it's ITV. They, they want to make money out of their own properties. What's the one thing you want to make sure that they keep consistent from the original? Not the reboot, but just the original. Well, the, well like the original... Obviously, you got to keep. Obviously, you can't change Captain Scarlet because it's based around him. That's the reason why it's called Captain Bloody Scarlet. Mm -hmm. um, have the relationship with uh, Adam, which you actually find out his real name, which is Captain Blue, and have that. I would actually have a lot of the same. I wouldn't have just random missions in every single episode where they don't relate to the last one. I would have them kind of continue on from each other to mm. have it be a bit more consistent so otherwise like because the first like three seasons of buffy for example which is every single episode was just a different episode which didn't relate to the last one and mm. yeah I, yeah i kind of was happy with that like for a little bit but at the same time i kind of when it was a bit more consistent i could get into it a lot more because i was looking forward to the next but i would definitely love to keep like some of the magic from the first, I always loved like the series, despite how goofy it actually is. But considering it's been, well, let me see if it was done in the sixties, I maybe sixty odd years since Captain Scarlet the original. Almost sixty years, yes. Wow, but yeah, like, and also you said you said to me just before like we started this that I didn't actually know this, but Stingray, Thunderbirds, and Captain Scarlet are all in one universe. Well, as far as I'm aware, it's Stingray and Captain Scarlet, but they haven't confirmed whether or not Thunderbirds is. I mean, technically, Thunderbirds is something else entirely in itself, because it's not... Yeah. I don't know if it is a government organisation, because it's more of a family-run organisation thing, but then at the same point, they have all... Like they, that's another series that just never really explained itself very well, other than the but fact that where, it was just sci-fi. Where's the legality with that, though? That's the thing. Well, I'm trying to figure out where the money came from. Because at least with Stingray and with Captain Scarlet, it was government-funded, wherever the government may be. But for Thunderbirds, it was done as a family thing. Like, it was done by the dad... And then it was yeah. all his sons ended up being the ones in charge of the different vehicles. But like you said, where'd the money come from? Yeah, exactly. But then because you also because like, like they're pretty much like a they're pretty much like a smaller equivalent to NASA, pretty much with all their vehicles and such like with their space vehicles and all the ones and like the big base they had up in space. Yes. Then this thing would have cost billions to do this whole project. So where did that money come from? Don't know. It's just there. No, exactly. But 
I would argue for one thing to remain for Captain Scarlet, if there were to ever be a live action version of it, to at least keep in the theme of the idea that the Mysterons are something deep and mysterious, but give them an actual physical body instead of them the random circles. Yeah. Like I mean you could easily do it in terms of perhaps instead of it just being they're just being two circles like just like glowing green eyes you could have it as like a pillar of light instead that has like a very sh very blurry version of a body before it takes over a host and then it forms into the host yeah that... see what i mean because at least then you know that there is a, a body of energy of sorts instead of it just being these just random glowing green circles yeah, true. I mean, just um, with the whole plot of them coming to Earth to basically massacre by the Earth and pretty much everybody there, um, the bit that does make me wonder about them, if, well, mind you, if the aliens are probably more intelligent, how did they know about Spectrum? Like, easily, couldn't they just turn their guns around on their little, like, Mars base and just shot Captain Black and then are done with it? <laughs> yeah, but then I suppose the plot being that they would be like any sentient being curious as to the origin of whatever it is that came across them. So they probably looked into the computer database of the vehicle that would be linked to Spectrum and look out to the various people. But then that in itself, why did they only go for Captain Scarlet? Surely they should have gone for Colonel White. Like the man that's in charge of the entire thing does nothing but sit on his ass all day long and wait for something to go wrong. Yeah, before like Captain Scarlet was the big, like was the like was the like the big goody two shoes that he ended up becoming beaten. Before like the Mistrons made a Captain Scarlet two point there's basically nothing to him. It was just basically like every other staff member that was there. Yeah. But then as well, like you get, you obviously have Lieutenant Green, but then what are yeah, the other? But you Basically, don't have any other rank members, if you think about it. You have the colonel, you have the captains, and you have one lieutenant, and then all the rest is angels. But then, technically, yeah. in the command system in itself, you should have privates, sergeants, and other bits and bobs in between. Yeah, so, like, basically, everybody, if you've ever watched, if you've seen Thunderbirds, like, Lieutenant Green's, like, really, like, quite, is really, like, quite intelligent, he's very brainy. So, if you think about it, like, brains, Lieutenant Green. So, yeah. But, like I say, I don't know how the whole system of Spectrum works, because obviously there's not many members within it. Yeah, because, yeah, we only ever see, like, the captains and, like, the lieutenants, but we never see anybody else on the base. Like, even, no. like, even just the cleaners. Like, we don't no. see anyone. No, you don't see any maintenance team. You get, like, next to nobody, no actual, like workers other than just these people that are labeled as captain or whatever but they have no reason or like they don't even show how they got the training or how they get recruited it's just they yeah. are randomly part of this thing which i think would be a really interesting plot point to do if they were to make it as a live action series but then i don't think we'd want it dragging on too much because otherwise we'd get bored and end up fe getting fed up of the series Although with a with a live action series, if there ever was one, the thing I would have for like the Mistrons coming to Earth, if they're gonna try and maybe um, if they're coming to Earth, like their first plan in the very first episode was to kill the worldwide president. So like one world government kill the one world president, that will screw everything up, and then. Mm. I don't know, maybe gra go gradually through like the world's leaders and so on, and then go through a possible shadow government that leads into a cool thing with the Illuminati that maybe the Mistrons could take over like a possible shadow government, and then that ends up creating something else, and maybe maybe using them as maybe a form of re of repopulation of coloni colonizing different planets and so on. There's, I feel, there's a lot of opportunities there. Mm. I mean. I had just thought that instead of them actually just taking over from the get-go, you could do it in such a way that the guy that is in charge already, like the main president of the world, 
has already been in league with the Mysterons. That's the reason why he sends Spectrum to try and get rid of them, because he's had enough of being their puppet, and it all backfires. And then it reveals down the line that that's why this is all happening, is because it's all gone completely kaputsky. And yeah. we end up having to try and fix a world afterwards that's been shattered to pieces because the Mr. Ones have either been defeated or left. And there's no government that's stable enough because the Mr. Ones were the reason why it was stable in the first place. Yeah, what a, con what a conundrum that is. But that's it. I mean, this is such a weird series, despite how little information we had from it growing up because it was just something kooky that ITV had. It was a great series, don't get me wrong. But I don't know if ITV would ever think about doing more with it because there was not very much to it other than explosions and sci-fi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would love to see them try again because the reboot was... <sighs> It was so crap, it really was. Oh god, the, it was rubbish. I mean, the thing is, like, they tried using CGI animation, which in itself is a decent thing, but it just didn't work. I don't know why. I think it just it was either they couldn't render the characters properly or something about it just didn't seem to sit right. Yeah, because you see like other animations, the animations, well, they look good, they look animated, but this yeah. one looked, like the animation looks really unfinished. Cheap. Yeah. But, yeah. Anything else to add to this today, dude? Well, I think we've like gone through uh, quite a lot of this. So I also have, um, well, I also have one of the subscribers on my other channel, Fantastic Paranormal, that's been looking forward to this episode, so I can't wait to, for it to come out and then he can watch it, but... Yeah, for like this one, I'm sure we maybe might do Thunderbirds at some point down the road. Like I'm, like I've had a lot of fun talking about this one. I love Candid Scarlet, but obviously next week it's going to be Ben's turn. So what's next week going to be? So next week we are going to be deep diving into the many properties that HBO has acquired or been given the rights to for DC, because. For whatever reason, we've had months and months and months where we've had next to no news for anything comic book. And then all of a sudden, we got Justice League Dark live adaptation. We got Swamp Thing coming back. We got Zatanna. We got Constantine. Like, we got Peacemaker. It's like, bam, bam, bam. Like, I'm so excited. that like, I am so happy that DC is finally going into their weirder side of things instead of sticking to the trio that is Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman. Uh, Superman. But there we go. So, thanks for joining us, folks. Boris has been behaving today because he's actually not hungover. And, again, as usual, stay safe, stay home, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for watching. <laughs>